What's up everybody, Alex here, and welcome to the Dota Underlords Best Builds of the Week, the weekly series where I show you guys top 5 meta builds to help you rank up in Dota Underlords. Now this week we're starting with 6 mages because the 6 mage composition has received some very considerable buffs, namely to that of Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden now has a 3 star effect, so at 3 stars, what she does is she provides your allies with 20% cooldown reduction provided that she is alive. That's important. She has to be alive in order to get that cooldown reduction. That cooldown reduction is extremely important because it's going to allow for multiple casts from obviously your Storm Spirit. Razor can get multiple casts, Morphling is going to have multiple casts, but even guys like Lich and uh, Keeper of the Light will be able to get multiple casts at any given match. So very valuable Crystal Maiden at 3 stars. Uh, Razor has a 3 star effect of well. He steals attack damage from an opponent and applies it to himself and when he switches targets he loses the buff but the uh, opponent uh, keeps the uh, negative uh, damage increase decrease I should say but um, that's not as uh, important for a six mage comp the Crystal Maiden is really the one you are really rolling hard for. Of course, you take a 3-star Razor if you can, but that 3-star Crystal Maiden is so important. I like uh, putting a Yule Scepter on her just to help keep her alive. She's in a Pudge Pullable position, so if she gets Pudge Pulled, she's at least going to kind of, uh, you know, put people in the air there with the Yule Scepter. Uh, it's up to you. You can even try and bait someone like the uh, the Morphling. Hopefully, no one here moves and the Morphling just gets pulled. He won't be, be able to attack. He has a very limited attack range. You'll see that the Crystal Maiden has a significantly further attack range. That's why you put her in the corner. But at, uh, you're also running a few Warlocks here in Disruptor and Shadow Fiend. They, uh, and the other thing here is that everyone here does magic based damage, including Friendly Fire Hobby, and Friendly Fire has been uh, nerfed a little bit, it was way too powerful, but still, at 70% additional magic damage, every single unit here is going to have an increase in their uh, DPS potential, with their uh, spells and abilities, even Ravage, which I do re uh, recommend a Refresh Orb on, you could even Refresh Orb Lich of course, but uh, even Ravage is a magical damage based ability, so this build is all about doing as much damage you can with magic based abilities, and it is one heck of a build. And for the second build of the week, we've got six Hunters, Knights, and Vigilant. And guys, this build has been buffed multiple times over the last few weeks. It was already a fantastic build, and now it's even better. Uh, namely, the major buffs that have occurred are to Terrorblade. He now has a 3-star effect where he's going to do 100% damage, uh, bonus pure damage to enemy demons. That's cool. But realistically, the actual buff in uh, Terrorblade comes from the fact that his mana and uh, requirement was changed from 100 to 80. So he's going to be able to cast his uh, his Metamorphosis much, uh, much quicker in a fight uh, which is good because uh, he'll be swapping for you know health a little quicker he's gonna be doing his primary DPS a lot faster it also uh, increased his magic resistance so for all three uh, three levels he has a consistently high magic resistance so they've increased his magic resistance which is fantastic and Weaver also got buffed at three stars basically whenever he uh, he does his ability he's gonna have a mana burn effect where he's gonna be basically uh, like it's almost like a, um, a diffusal blade he's gonna be burning mana and deal damage uh, dealing damage back kind of like our uh, the anti-mage but um, a fantastic build because you are going vigilance I highly highly recommend that you grab a desolator it is one of the primary items that you need for this build desolator is an absolutely fantastic uh, item because when you focus fire with desolator you're doing an incredible amount of damage especially when you consider enthrall and Essex and the damage reduction that enthrall uh, provides you are going to be blowing units up uh, this build does require in order to get to 600s it does require that you get the antlers the antlers are required I do like it on someone like uh, on Luna because Moonshard is a little more beneficial on someone like Sven but uh, realistically you could pass around if you want but you do need those antlers and of course if you can get a Medusa you put her in for you know whoever your weakest link might be you know you want her near the front because of the uh, the way her stone gaze works but uh, Medusa is of course an option as well in the late game and for the third build of the week, we are at Brawny's. If you are fortunate enough to get the RNG to get Brawny's going, guys, this is a fantastic build and one that you can snowball right to first place with. Provided no one hard counters you with voids, it blows my mind that people are not running voids to counter Brawny's when they see them snowballing, but hey, that's a whole other conversation. Uh, I've modified the build quite significantly. Uh, of course, you, you have the dragon uh, element here, and I do like the dragon element. You can even put Dragonite in there if you really wish, but what I've liked doing is uh, actually going double Beastmaster. Of course, when you can get to three-star Beastmaster, you do it. But um, 
I do like having two Beastmasters on the edge here because they're going to wild access through. Give them high DPS items. Like, I do suggest items like, you know, Silver's Edge. It's a great item for someone like Beastmaster. Um, of course, a Stonehall Pike is great on Beastmaster because of the fact that wild access will amplify the amount of damage that uh, Beastmaster will do on follow up attacks. Uh, but uh, there's a few other items I want to talk about as well. Bristleback benefits greatly from the Octarine uh, simply because it reduces his cooldown, which allows him to stack his cool sprays much more frequently. Of course, he also benefits from something like Blade Mail, uh, but Axe is a, just an absolute monster with Blade Mail. Blade Mail on Axe is an absolutely unbelievable item. And another low key thing, now I've talked about this in the past, your three star Orga Magi is going to have an opportunity to multicast Bloodlust. These are extended fights. Anytime you're against, uh, and running brawnies, I should say, you are running extended fights that are longer battles because of the way brawnies uh, kind of uh, compound their health. That is why we like Let's Go Crazy Hobgin, because um, a lot of people are going to be up when he casts. Uh, it's a long sustained fight, so it gives you the greatest opportunity to kind of do as much damage as you can. To the same effect, uh, you know, those Bloodlusts are going to do a ton of work. If you can get an Octarine on uh, the Ogre Magi, before you know it, everyone's going to be Bloodlusted. Um, of course, it is a, it's hard to get him to three stars. He's not overly contested, but for, for whatever reason, in my experience, I've had a hard time getting Ogre, Ogre Magi to three stars. And if you can't, you just keep Viper in. It's that simple, right? Um, and uh, yes, you're going to lose the Brute bonus, but the Brute bonus isn't a huge impact here because of the sheer amount of health they have. You're after his Bloodlust, not necessarily the Brute bonus. Let's move on to build number four. And for the fourth build of the week, I'm bringing you a build with a unit that people are simply sleeping on, and that is Miss Legion Commander. Back in the day when Bloodbound was a major thing, everyone was running Legion Commander. Everyone loved the raid boss Legion Commander, but guess what? This is actually a fantastic build. People are sleeping on Legion. You could three-star Legion in almost all your games if you kind of re-roll re a little aggressively here and there. She is Three starable and borderline uncontested in all games, and uh, this is how this build works. So essentially, uh, there are a couple units that do benefit from the three star bonuses. Shadow Shaman is going to do Serpent Wards and is going to uh, Chicken at three stars. Uh, you know, Witch Doctor is going to curse people hit by the cask. Uh, uh, Bat Rider is going to do percentage based burning damage, which is perfect against Brawnies. And uh, CK, uh, when he gets to three stars, it allows you to split up the knights and maintain the bonus. That bonus kind of sucks, honestly. Um, in my testing, it hasn't been overly impactful. Um, these other bonuses are significantly more impactful. That's still good. Like it, the formation changes are, are fantastic, but in this circumstance, it's not that necessary. But anyways, you get him three stars. Get him three stars. Why wouldn't you? Uh, but the way this build works is you have Legion Commander. I have been liking Battle Fury on her, and I'll tell you why. So you're gonna be cleaving a lot of damage to the outside uh, to other units. And remember, she's gonna count as a demon, so she's gonna get a, be getting a pure damage buff as well. She's also gonna be attacking as a troll. She's gonna be attacking super fast she's gonna be a demon uh she's gonna be doing she's gonna have the uh the armor uh, and the damage resistance of the knights as well she's gonna step up and generally engage like this sven is gonna be cleaving to help her kill whoever's on this edge here it is an absolutely unbelievable build uh, you're gonna have a nessix dropping demons here you're running support healing in essex because of the two demons the archer's a demon as well which helps to amplify the damage for ck and for legion commander Overall, a fantastic build. I like having Necrophos on the edge here with the Omni Knight uh, because it helps to kind of, especially with the Scythe of the Vibes, because, you know, you can kind of, uh, he's tankier. If you put Witch Doctor there, well, Witch Doctor's at three stars. Let's talk about a Dazzle. So Dazzle's 2200 health. You have 2500 health here on Necrophos. He casts his healing a little more frequently. Give him a Scythe of the Vibes. Let him piggy someone that comes up on him. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. Um, in terms of items, I do recommend you look for like a Moon Shard for someone like Sven. It'll amplify his damage so significantly. And uh, in the early game honestly chainmail works really well with someone like omni knight really helps to kind of give him effective hp now uh, you're looking for a void stone for people like witch doctors and dazzles whoever your primary healers are you can even go dragon lance with someone like bat rider i've done that in the past and i really like it and of course you're looking for an octarine for shadow shaman that'll allow him to get multiple serpent wards on the field and if he's at three stars you can be hexing guys too guys this is a fantastic build i cannot believe people are sleeping on it especially with the legion commander and troll bonuses in effect and for the final build of the week, we are on Assassins and Voids. But this is a much different build than I've shown you in the past. Um, so basically, spirits have been nerfed. They're still good. They're still good. But in my testing, the nerf is pretty significant. Uh, there's still a good viable, um, a good vi a viable build. I'm still working on some of the kinks to see how I can kind of you know min max them. 
But for now, I actually recommend you peel off of a Assassin and Spirit build composition and move more towards Voids, Assassins, and Insects. And this is why. What you're doing here is you're stacking stuns. Um, now, obviously, okay, this is the ideal situation. But you're probably not going to have Faceless Void right away. You'll have to run Void Spirit. And you probably won't have the, uh, the Sand King right away. You're going to have to run Broodmother. Those are the substitutions. But once you get SK, you put him in for the Broodmother. You put uh, Faceless in for the, uh, the uh, Void Spirit. You're maintaining the alliances. Of course, you're completing assassin as well. And what you're going to have here is you're going to have assassins, you're going to have insects, and you're having voids. Now, the insects don't actually apply the void bonus. I've tested it. It would be oh, it would be so broken if it did, but it doesn't. They don't. But what you're looking at here is you're looking at a build that really takes advantage of stun effects. Now, obviously, you're not going to get three refresher orbs. I just put them there as kind of like you can use a refresher orb here. Um, you know, if you get one, you can put it on Tide if he's two stars. Enigma, you can put it on Sand King as well. Here's what's happening. You got Ravage Stun here. You get two of them here. You're going to have a slow effect from Enigma. You're going to have a stun from the Sand King. You're going to have the Spike Carapace stun people from Nyx Assassin. You're going to have Chrono Cube come down. Uh, and you're going to be disarmed by, uh, by Slark. There are so many disables in this build. The opposition can barely even do anything while being attacked and hit for a considerable damage. I do recommend Kea in this build. If you think you're going to be running this build, run Kea. It really helps your Queen of Pain and actually really helps your Enigma as well as an option for Kea too. Especially if you're against Bronies. If you're against Bronies, give, give uh, Enigma the... Uh the Kea, it's a fantastic item. Obviously, you're looking for a Mask of Madness on Slark. He has uh, multiple passives. He becomes absolutely monstrous at two stars with a Mask of Madness. And honestly, you could three-star Slark. No one's really going Assassins. And uh, Slark is often completely and utterly uncontested because no one goes scaled either. So... He is one of those units you could legitimately three star, stack him on the bench. Uh, Templar, you won't because she's relatively contested, as is Ember Spirit, who I do recommend going a uh, Battle Fury on. Uh, Battle Fury because it's going to maximize his damage potential. You're not going Blink Dagger like you usually do in Spirit builds because you don't really care about the Delta Slams here. You just want to maximize Ember Spirit's uh, DPS, and his Sleight of Fist will apply the Battle Fury effect to everyone he hits. Um, in terms of early game, I do recommend Nyx Assassin getting Chainmail because because before you get this main front line here, you're going to be running like a Nyx Assassin up front to be uh, Spike Carapacing uh, and stunning everyone up front. Spike Carapacing, I just invented a word. But anyways, that is how this build works. It's all about stun and crowd control. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I would be more than happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching and a very special thank you to all of my wonderful subscribers. Take care everyone and I hope that these builds help you find success in Dota Underlords.